Okay, before this place gets noisy with dirt bikes and my friends show up, I want to do a walk around of this thing because it's pretty cool. Um, so this is the first time out with it. I was supposed to get the Bundu Tech awning yesterday and I've got the brackets already pre-installed from touring, um, tough touring from Australia. I had to order them from Australia. But the awning didn't show up. It sucks because there's going to be a little bit of rain this weekend and the awning's going to be huge. It'll cover from here all the way to the back. I mean, this thing is going to be insane, but I'm going to have to make sure and stake it down really well, especially if the wind picks up. But that's okay. It'll be, it'll be nice to have a big shade and the shade will come all the way out to the end of the sink here. So it's gonna be huge. Okay, this is all folded out. This is the front of it, obviously. This is like a queen size bed. In the front box, I put the diesel heater in here. I put this hose to where it can pivot, this duct. That way, if I accidentally spill diesel, I can pivot this out and get fresh air. Otherwise, if I don't spill diesel and I'm not worried about the smell coming in, because Natalie will not like that, I can just uh, crack this like that. It's not perfect and I already had the diesel heater that I'd put into a front runner box. So I just took it back out of the front runner box. Now it has a permanent home in this. So if it's that cold, I'll just run this thing. This is the kitchen area. This camper doesn't have a gray water tank. Everything just goes in here and then you use like a bucket. I got a bucket on the other side. It's got hot and cold water. I did get the new water heater installed. It's got the, well, I thought this was a Dometic. It's a Smev apparently. So that's an auto ignition. And this thing has a huge 90 liter National Luna which is a really nice fridge but it doesn't this is the freezer side and it has one side that can be a freezer unlike the snowmaster which can be either side in my opinion just from the short time i've had this on it's not as good as, as a snowmaster is at keeping and maintaining temperatures it might be more efficient but um it doesn't freeze as well and though the lid's a single lid even though it has two different adjustable compartments maybe that has something to do with it the newer conquerors started coming with an 85 liter snowmaster instead and uh, i think this one fits a little better it's a little bigger but the newer ones came with the snowmasters and if this ever kicks the bucket then that's probably what i'll do too this is your cutlery or this is i guess your dishes so it's got like perfect beer glasses coffee cups i put these in these in here for like measuring cups kind of and then I put my hydro flask in here because we'll use those more than we'll use wine glasses. But I kept a few wine glasses for Natalia. Perfect whiskey glasses. Very excited about that. Kept all four of those. And then the bowls, obviously. And then... Um, and then I bought some more of these cutting boards. And then it's got all your spoons. Everything stays in place, which is pretty cool. These plates are goofy looking, but they fit perfectly in the bins. So they did it for a reason. Everything on this is pretty well thought out. Moving on, um, obviously I got the top popped. I have not fixed the roof seal yet. I need to order that from the guy who used to sell these things. This is the uh, bar. These things have kind of a drop down bar. It doesn't work that good for some bottles, whatever. Works good enough and it just kind of lifts them whenever I open it. But so you have a place to put wine bottles and stuff. And this is designed to be a little mini bar. And then, um, and it's inside outside. So if you're trying to get to your drinks, this is on the door. So when you're inside, you can still get to it. It's got all these pouches. I've just got lights and stuff in there. I don't know what I'm going to load those with, if anything. I'm just because I have the space, I'm not trying to just fill this thing up. After this trip, I'll actually take more stuff out because. There's a lot of stuff that I'm not going to use. So this is the pantry. You can fit a lot of stuff in here. I'll probably take these three things out to fit even more for longer trips. But anyway, so you can fit all sorts of food. The newer models actually came with a deeper pantry. And this is an angle that's actually inset more. But whatever. It's plenty of food. It's more luxury than I'm used to. And then it has all these on the outside. The guy who owned this before me let this door swing open. He didn't latch it. and took off. The door swung open so it's got dents in it. So another reason that I was able to afford this thing whatever it says 200 watts of solar on the roof i'm pretty sure they're 100 watts a piece and they're in kind of a cool um like hinge system to where you can pull them out pretty easy but once the front bed is set up it's not so easy to get them off so i should have thought about that because the sun's already moving and i could be getting more energy than i am but i don't know if i need it because lithium because lithium charges so fast i'm not sure that i really need to mess with it I found myself in a situation already on the first time out that something that was working is now not working. So I kind of like the idea that the solar can come off because if I were to have a, an issue like that again, then I can pull the solar off and rely on it more. Normally, uh, with like the FJ and its battery, if I had a situation where the battery wasn't charging off of the truck, 
I could charge it off of solar and it's a smaller battery, bigger panel, whatever. But on this, if it doesn't charge off of the vehicle and we used a ton of power or using the inverter a lot, I can take these off. So I, maybe I do like these panels, the way they're set up. So I might not upgrade those as quick as I thought, but I, there's still a lot of room on the roof here for a big, uh, a big Merlin panel, so, or a fourth D solar panel. So we'll see. This is the Blue Ridge Overland XL bag. I think I'm gonna get the smaller one for this camper and keep the big one for the FJ. Cause when I have it on the FJ, I carry like a bucket in it, uh, like a collapsible bucket and a water hose and stuff. I'm not doing that with this. So it's kind of excessive. And with this, um, we'll be stopping to fill water and stuff like that every once in a while. So I'll probably have access to throwing stuff away. It's got a big wood rack, which I didn't think I would use. And now that I used it, it's pretty awesome. That's a good, that's a well thought out idea. Obviously this has diesel cans. I'm going to take one of these, if not both of these off in exchange for gasoline, but I have, um, uh, I have one of them partially filled for the diesel heater, even though I won't need it. I think for the most part, um, on any trip, the tank that I have in the front box is going to be enough. And if I need to fill up, then I'd probably need to fill up gasoline too. So I can just fill it up at the, at the gas station. This is my filler for the water tank. It holds like 34 gallons. And then this is the bathroom side. So on the bathroom side, this awning comes out and actually makes a whole room. And I meant to grab the bag. It's one thing I forgot, um, but it makes a whole room and then it actually even has like a shower curtain inside the room to divide the shower from the sink. And so you can set up like a portable toilet or whatever. And then this door is the same thing. It's an inside outside door. So if you need access to your stuff, I put a mirror on it for Natalia and I'll use it for putting contacts in and stuff. And then this is where the shower goes, hot and cold water. So this is the bathroom side sink, stainless sink closes up. This is a Dometic. Some people swap these out for like a portable toilet that actually will slide out on rails. But right now I'm gonna keep it this way. A lot of people apparently don't use this, but I use it so far, so I'm just gonna see how I like it. But it's got storage. Again, this has no gray water, so you just have to use a bucket and this has like a drain with a hose. So you just drain it into something. And then getting into this on both sides, it has a drop down step, which is cool. But when you're inside of it at night and the doors are closed, they take up room they kind of work like a shelf but it's kind of a kind of a weird thing they're not perfect it looks like there's those buckles so maybe i can adjust those buckles to where this is straighter because then it would be more of a flat shelf but all right so let's check out the inside of this thing okay so there's the front bed it's kind of cozy but it's pretty big i mean you can fit two adults there my feet hang off the end a little bit but i don't really sleep with my legs straight anyway these windows open up real big, which is pretty sweet. Let's a lot of air through. And then on the doors, they have a drop down zip up net. So if you are hanging out in here in the summertime with doors open, you can zip those up and bugs won't come in after you, which is nice. On the, uh, the front bed folds up and then you can get to the refrigerator when it's actually inside and closed up for the night. This is the back hanging out area. And so this whole thing comes down there's actually another like coffee table under there is what they call it the the later models came with a longer table that was just one big long table so this table can go outside by the pantry and then you can also have like a small table in here it's got tons of storage almost all of these i don't have hardly anything in but um there's a lot of room to store stuff and then this is access to the pantry from the inside so you can get your stuff again when you're hanging out in here and then what i did was uh, or i'm turning this in wasn't really completely ready for this trip, so I've still got a bunch of stuff in here I need to take out. But I got my 12 volt sockets on, 12 volt sockets on, and then I got the uh, hardcore lighting here, which is, I don't know, that could be cleaned up a little bit, but I'm not worried about it, works great. On the newer models, this actually isn't even here, and they came with like a heater in this area, and then they came with more stuff, a TV and everything, mine doesn't have that. I put a hardcore light, I ended up doing it up here, and it just kind of uses the Velcro in the roof. And then that filled in this light because there's a huge dark area right here. And so, yeah, this thing is awesome. And then these back cushions fold in. And then this whole area becomes one giant bed, which is longer than the other bed, especially for tall people. Like I tuck my feet kind of in there. But it's, it's wider than like a king bed, I think. It's huge. So it's pretty nice. Window, it's got like a blind that goes down. And then again, it's just tons of storage in the back. This one doesn't even come with speakers in the back. 
Um, I was digging around in that wiring yesterday. I've normally got it tucked in. It looks a little nicer. And then it's got fans on both sides to keep the air moving. But uh, what I did on the floor was these things, these are built in South Africa and they don't deal with the cold that we have in North America. So what a lot of guys do that I'd found online was putting like gym mats, like the, the puzzle piece looking gym mats. And I stuck all those together underneath the carpet. So now the floor is basically insulated. When we first camped in this and we were picking it up, um, we just stayed at like a campground so we could plug in a, an electric heater because we didn't have heat. And you could feel the floor just radiating cold. So I corrected that and now it's not as bad. It stayed 60 degrees in here last night and the heater wasn't even really on that high. So my heater duct I put right here, which isn't quite flush, but it's pretty nice. And so it's just one duct is taking care of everything. There's not really room to run much more ducting, which is why they put theirs here originally. The heater that these came with in like Africa, and I think the US models use the same heater. It was like a glycol heated liquid system that would come through here. And it was like heating up a radiator and blowing through that. I don't know, I didn't want to deal with all that. It seems like seems like more problem than a diesel heater. Diesel heaters are easy. I know how to work on them. And even if I didn't want to work on it, like any semi truck place has somebody that can work on those things. So anyway, uh, I chose to do the diesel heat. So that's the inside of this thing. And it's kind of nice because you have fridge power, water pump, TV, of course, I don't have hooked up, and then fans. So you can turn off any one thing. So kind of quirky, but really cool. So here's the first outing. We'll see how this goes. Got to get used to everything.